Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. TLS auto sequence has been initiated. We heard all members of the teams are ready to launch today with the exception of getting a final clearance from the weather conditions at our transoceanic abort sites. We are counting down to the T minus five minute mark where the clock will be held if we need to to wait on the weather to clear at the tail sites. Pilot Brown has configured the orbiter's crew cabin switches to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. Go ahead, please. Atlantis Houston, update to the KSC altimeter setting 3020. Copy, uh, KSC altimeter 3020. The orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. It can be extended in just a few seconds if necessary. This puts the arm in the launch configuration. And entity, the clock will hold at T minus five minutes. I've got the deal. Thank you. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Launch director flight on interground one. Uh, go ahead, flight. Yeah, Bob, I think uh, the story we have here with Ben Greer is that we have a couple of knot violation on the forecast. The last several observations we have are actually within our crosswind limits. We believe that the forecast bounds the problem and the worst we'll have is 18 knots in the crosswind. And it is very potential that we'll have something on the order of the previous observations that we've seen, which are on the order of, uh, of uh, 16 knots, end by one. Launch director, uh, flight on underground. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. I still believe that 18 knots and a lighted Ben Gurrier is an acceptable uh, landing condition today. And I do believe that bounds the case and that uh, we potentially could be a few knots less than that. So my recommendation of the program at this time is that uh, these are acceptable conditions to launch. I copy, and I did understand that the trend was uh, downward from that the is correct. previous ops. Okay, flight and uh, ops manager. On the go ground. ahead. Uh, okay, Lauren. Well, uh, you've heard the forecast and the uh, and the reported uh, and the recommendation uh, for uh, proceeding with these conditions, and uh, would like uh, your approval or concurrence on uh, on this particular item before we proceed. And uh, for uh, Jeff, uh, how long have we noticed the winds on the downward trend now? Well, I have them from. Uh hour and a half ago we were in the 20 knot region 
And uh, and at 30 minutes ago, they were in the 17, 18 knot region. And then the last 15 or 20 minutes, they've been in the 15 knot region. And those have been the observations. There is a few inaccuracies in those, but I feel very confident that 18 knots is a bound and that would be acceptable. And there's a reasonable chance there would be a few knots less than that. Okay. And uh, I believe the lighted conditions for the first 20 minutes on Ben Gurira runway makes that acceptable. And the flight crew ops, do uh, you have a recommendation? Okay. Uh, turns out he can't talk on air ground one, but uh, he agrees that we think we have a bounded condition, and uh, he'll go to pick up the count. Okay, copy. Uh, MCD launch director. <laughs> okay, uh, what work do we have remaining before? Uh... We've got to do APU pre-start, and we've also got to activate the uh, LPS and recorders. Okay, well, why don't you put that in work, and uh, maybe we can get Atlantis and this crew uh, up in orbit today. Okay, I copy. Uh, with that, once we get that completed, we'll have to go pick up the count then? Yeah, go to proceed. I copy that. OTC entity, perform APU pre-start and activate your recorders, please. Copy that. JRPS, OTC. This is JRPS. Start recorders. Recorders running, sir. Copy. PLT, perform APU pre-start. PLT in work. We're standing by to resume our launch countdown at the T minus five minute mark. Just activating uh, recorders. And GLS entity two one two. Go ahead, sir. As soon as we get APU pre start completed, we're going to give you the go to pick up the count. Just as a heads up. Okay, we'll stand by. RTC PLT APU pre start complete. Three gray top max. Copy three gray. And OTC entity on copy. You have recorders up with JLPS? Firm recorders are running. Okay, I'll copy. GLS, uh, pick up the count. Okay, stand by, sir, while we reset those measurements. Okay, countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. GLS is go for order APU start. TLT, perform APU start. Pilot, reconfigure fast heaters. Pilot Kirk Brown. Now activating orbiter APUs. Commander McMonagall is asked to reconfigure the orbiter system heaters for launch. CDR heater reconfigure complete. Copy done. OTC, PLT, APU start complete, three and hydrine. Copy. And we have three good APUs. The APUs provide hydraulic power to the vehicle system, such as the aero surfaces and the landing gear, flight control system. Yeah, this is go for purge sequence four. Final purge of the main engines is is going to happen in a few seconds. Also, the engine valves are being opened to prepare for engine start. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. They're being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. The three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. All systems are go for launch at this time, just a few minutes away from the 13th voyage of Atlantis with a crew of six on a 10-day flight to study the effects of the sun on the Earth's atmosphere. T-minus three minutes and counting. Yeah, go for ET, LO2, PLT 
CLT, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. CLT in what? Retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood is now underway. Flight crew will close and lock their visors in the next few seconds. OTC PLT, caution warning, memory clear is complete, no unexpected messages. After that, all crew members close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. We go to take Atlantis back to the skies. And we'll be happy to do that. We'll see you in about 11 days. Yeah, let's go for ET LH2 pressurization. Tank holding liquid hydrogen propellant used to feed the main engine is now being pressurized. Atlantis will be launched on a northerly trajectory on an orbit inclined 57 degrees to the equator. 1 minute 30. Less than a minute and away now from the launch of Atlantis, the seventh shuttle flight this year, and the 66th space shuttle launch. One minute. Just past the one minute mark. Atlantis is now going to be operating from internal power supplies. At the T minus 31 second mark, Atlantis's onboard computers will have control of vehicle functions. T minus 35 seconds. Atlantis is go for auto sequence start. In the next few seconds, thousands of gallons of water will be dumped on the platform to help absorb the shock of the 7 million pounds of thrust produced by the shuttle. 15. In the next 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on a mission to study planet Earth. launch Atlanta speed now 1,000 miles an hour altitude 84,000 feet, 12 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis speed now 2,200 miles an hour. Flight controllers are standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Booster officer confirms a good separation and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Atlantis now in its second stage. Its three main engines continuing to operate well at full 
full throttle. Atlanta's performance, nominal. That call to Atlantis indicating that its performance on the solid rockets is just as planned at this point. Endeavour's three main engines will now continue to burn for another six and a half minutes to reach orbital velocity. Atlantis, two engine, Ben Gurrier. Copy, two engine, Ben Gurrier. Endeavour speed now 3,500 miles an hour. That call indicating that Endeavour could perform a transoceanic abort landing if needed on only two engines. All three engines continue to operate well. All systems in good shape. 